Hi guys and welcome back to my channel. Today I am going to be sharing with you the brand new 2024 Budget Finder. Hi, if you are new, my name is Caitlin and I blog over at the simplyorganizedhome.com and every single year for the last, I think eight years, I have released a budget binder and every year I try to make it just a little bit better. I change the colors, I update it, I just make it more user friendly. And so this year, the 2024 budget binder is available today. If you guys are ready to get your budgets under control, start preparing for the new year, then you're going to want to grab it at the launch price because you will save 30% off. If you are watching this video and the launch is over, don't worry. I have a coupon code down in the description box below for you. This year, the budget binder contains over 300 pages of printables. No, you're not going to use all of those, but we're going to try and walk through a few of those today just to give you an idea of what's inside and what you'll be getting. So this year, you guys will have the option of three different covers. The striped cover that you see here a flower cover and a polka dot cover. So if you guys have one of those binders that has the sleeves that kind of goes on the front, um, that's not how mine is. So I just put it as the first page. But if you have one of those sleeves, that's a great place to put that cover. You'll notice that in the very beginning of the budget binder, there are two different sections. One of them is a how to set up. It's packed full of information on each one of the documents that you'll find inside. So it will give you an even better overview of what you're gonna find inside that I'm gonna give you here today. So make sure that you guys read through that so that you know which forms will work for you, which ones you probably wanna skip and that sort of thing. And then there's also a how to print because it's 300 pages, I think 307 total. You're going to want to read that how to print because you're definitely not gonna to wanna to waste ink and print pages that you're not going to use. In the budget binder, you're going to find multiple different documents on just some different tips, budgeting recommendations, and goal setting. So the first one is Dave Ramsey's Baby Steps. You'll also find some budgeting tips. If you guys want to just add these to the front of your binder, it's a great place to just keep them as refreshers. Um, there's a yearly financial goals, so you can set five big goals along with some action steps. So I think setting five goals is probably the maximum that I would recommend. You'll find an annual calendar. So for 2024, you'll find a calendar for the whole year. So this is just a great place to kind of look over how um, your year is going, highlight important dates, that sort of thing. And then you'll find the long-term financial planning pages. And this gives you a big box of what to plan, how to plan for things every single month of the year. I like to use these to highlight birthdays, anniversaries, just important events that are gonna be happening that are probably gonna cost our family money each month. So this can kind of act as your calendar for your money. The next two pages are how to create an annual budget. And this is just kind of can give you a snapshot overview of what your finances are gonna look like for the year. So you can create a list of your monthly bills and then you can create a list of your expenses by paycheck. So if you have bills that are due monthly, you're gonna put them on this side. If you have expenses that you take money out for every single paycheck, that could include groceries, gasoline, that sort of thing, then that's gonna come out of here. And then we're going to get into the monthly sections. And so today I'm just going to show you what the May sections look like. You're going to have the option of using 22 different forms, three of which are title pages. So you don't have to use the title pages if you don't want to, but they're kind of just handy to have if um, it's a good way to separate your months. So you have the striped page, the flower page, and then just a really simple wreath page. You'll also have the options of using three different calendars. So this is just personal preference. I have everybody who buys this uses a different calendar. I think it's really just up to you and how kind of your brain functions and works. So you can have just the vertical calendar on one page. You could use the horizontal calendar on one page. And then the last option is a calendar on two pages. So this is what gives you the most room to write. 
from what I have heard from people and from what we have done in years past is we use our calendars to jot down when bills are due each month. And then what I will do is I'll go through and highlight which paycheck those bills are coming from. Now we're getting into our monthly budget forms. So there's four different budget forms that you can use and you're not gonna use all of them. You're gonna just choose one. There's the monthly budget form, the bi-weekly or twice monthly budget form, the weekly budget form, and then the by paycheck budget form. So let's just walk through real quickly what each one of those are. This first one here is the by paycheck. So up here at the top, you would put the pay period, you would list your incomes, you would list things that are the most important, your off the top items. So this would be things like giving, savings, retirement. Then you're going to, going to list your sinking funds, things that you're saving for. So that could be Christmas, vacation, car maintenance, car replacement, house projects. And then this is going to be your expenses. So this is where you're going to do the, the majority of your budgeting. And you're going to list your mortgage, your um, utility bills, your food, your personal spending. All of those things are going to come right out of here. The very top line is where you're going to put what your checking account balance is before that pay period begins. And then down here at the end is what you're going to end with. So you kind of want these numbers to be pretty close, not exact, but pretty close. That way you're spending all of the money and you're, you're allocating all of the money from your paycheck to go somewhere. And then when the next paycheck arrives, you would take this number down here, what's left in your checking account and restart a new budget. So this is the buy paycheck budget form. The next one is if you want to budget monthly. So if you budget your money, you get paid monthly, you wanna budget your money monthly, then this is the form that you would use. It's set up in a similar fashion, except you don't have the checking account balances. You are just trying to basically spend every penny that you are bringing in. So that's Dave Ramsey, that is the zero base budget. If you bring in, $5,000, you want to spend $5,000, not necessarily spend, but you want to allocate it to go somewhere. So that might mean that you're allocating it to go to retirement savings. You're allocating it to go into your savings account. Um, you're putting it aside for an emergency. Doesn't matter, but you're putting, you're telling your money where to go rather than just letting it float away, which is what will happen if we don't have a budget. The next budget form is if you're paid either bi-weekly or twice monthly. So this gives you two different sections to break your bills up into the first half of the month and the second half of the month. And then the last one is if you're paid weekly, you have four different sections to break your bills up into the four different paychecks that you receive. Now we're gonna get into cash envelopes. So if you are a cash budgeter and you like to allocate some of your money to put in your cash envelopes for spending, could be groceries, gas, personal spending, all kinds of different things, then you're gonna to wanna to use one of these cash envelope forms. And this cash envelope form is, just gives you one big sheet. You could use this if you're doing cash envelopes just once a month um, and allocate everything this way. If you're using the twice monthly or the um, bi-weekly budget form, then you might use this one so that you have two different sections to break up your cash envelopes into. Same way with this one. If you're using the weekly budget form, you're probably gonna grab this weekly cash envelopes form to break them up into the four different paychecks that you receive. The next form that you're gonna find in your monthly sections is the sinking funds form. This is the same as years past because I think I've heard a lot of positivity on this form. People like that they have the options of using this if they're going to really track their sinking funds. So what you would do is you would list your sinking funds over here. So some examples of sinking funds are actually listed in the how to set up your budget binder section. So that will give you some ideas, but just off the, t off the cuff here, Christmas is a great one to use as a sinking fund, vacation, big house projects, car savings, car maintenance, property taxes would be a great one if you don't have those escrowed into your mortgage. So you would have all of these different funds listed. You would list what your starting balance is. So if you're just starting to use sinking funds, you probably will have zero in all of these lines. The plus sign here tells you how much you wanna to add to that sinking fund that month. If you pull from that sinking fund, let's say it's November and you're starting to buy Christmas and you're gonna pull money out of that sinking fund, then you would subtract 
So then you would have your ending balance here. So in order to calculate this, you would start with how much you started with, you would add the next number, subtract the next number, and then that would give you your ending balance. A lot of people like to keep their sinking funds in a separate savings or checking account. That way that it's not kind of mixed in with your normal checking balance and kind of you're like, oh, I have a lot more money than I really, you know, really do. So you don't want to let it just sit there because if you see a lot of money sitting there, it's probably going to get spent. All right, the next two forms are spending trackers. So this spending tracker is great to use if you're using the buy paycheck budget form. So I am a debit card user now. I used to be a full cash user, but we use our debit card a whole lot more. And so tracking the spending on your debit card can get a little tricky and you definitely want to keep track of all of those transactions because it's super easy to go over budget. So this is kind of my, my way of tracking how much we're spending in different categories. So what I would do is if I'm just gonna track my groceries, I would just label up here my groceries and how much I want to spend during that pay period. So if I wanna spend $300 on groceries, every time I would go to the store, I would log Kroger, and then if I spent $150, then I would have $150 left. And then I would just continue to track how much I have spent and then how much I have left. And then once I get down to zero, then I'm done spending in that category until the next pay period. So on this form, you can track up to four different categories. So if you need more than four, you would just need to print more than one of those. And this one is very similar. And this one uh, just gives you two sections though. The next form that you're gonna find in the monthly sections is the charitable giving tracker. So if you give to your church, if you give to different organizations, you're gonna wanna track that because you can write that off on your taxes. So tracking that can be super helpful. And so this is what you would track if you're giving monthly. If you're just giving to one place, it would probably be best if you didn't even use this form and just use the annual one. But if you're giving to three or four or 10 or, tons of different organizations every month, then it's super helpful to track all of that giving on one form. And then you can just have a total down here and you'll use that on another form that I'll talk about here in a, in a minute. Some people like to use credit cards and I think that that's fine as long as you're paying them off every month. So um, we have two different ways that you can track your credit card spending. If you want to make sure that you're tracking it and adding it to the correct budget category, then you would print as many of these forms. This one says budget category, so that's tracking by category as you want to separate into different categories. So let's say you want to, you're only going to use your credit card for personal spending, gas and groceries. So if you're going to do that, then you're gonna print three of these forms. And every time you have a transaction, you're gonna log it on this form. And that way, by the time you get down to the bottom, you know how much you've spent and you can track to make sure that you're staying within your budget. Now, if you prefer to track your credit card spending based on the credit card that you have, then you would use this form. And so you would just label by the credit card. So if you have more than one, you would just print as many credit cards as you want to track on this and then you can log which budget category it belongs in. This next form is the irregular income form. So if you have any type of income that comes in that is not something that is consistent, it's not a, a normal part of your income or maybe your paid commission, um, you could receive bonus paychecks, you could receive overtime, it could be a number of different things you're probably going to want to use this form. You're going to log, just go ahead and label at the beginning of the month what income you're expecting to come in. So if you're expecting some overtime to come in, just label overtime and then wait until the end of the month until you find out how much that is. But at the very beginning of the month, you want to set a prioritized list. So you're going to label the different ways that you want to utilize that money. If you're paying off debt, you might want to just throw all of this money on debt. If you're trying to build your savings, you might be throwing all of this money into savings. If you're trying to pad some sinking funds or prepare for some big expenses, then that might be what you do down here. If you're like way into like baby steps, four, five, six, or even seven, then this is where you get to have a little bit of fun. So you're going to make a prioritized list, how much you plan to put in those different categories, and then a running total. 
And so once you find out how much money you've received in your overtime or whatever it is, then if this number says, you know, a thousand dollars, but down here you've plugged in $1,500 worth of things, then you would fund your list and, and your prioritized list starting at the top, working down until you've hit your thousand dollar mark. And then the next items would probably roll over to the next month. Finally, the last page in the monthly budget forms is just a notes page. So this is just a great place if you need to jot down notes from month to month that you have a place to do that. All right, now we're gonna get into different trackers and additional forms that you can print and use to help you guys budget. These are not all items that you're going to need, but some people might want these and I've got them there for you. Um, just they match everything, everything coordinates, so that's super helpful if you need those. So this is just a ledger. I had some requests a couple years ago for a ledger for I think tracking your checking account. So some people prefer to have just a larger page to track their checking. I get it, those, those ledgers that come with your checkbooks are so tiny. So this is set up in that way. So you can track your ledger, your checkbook ledger or savings account ledger or whatever you need to use this for on this page. We have two different ways to track your debt. So this is the outstanding debt form. So you would track your debts. You could label up to four debts per form. So if you need to have more than that, you would just need to print more than one. You would enter for each month how much your minimum payment was on that debt, if you, if you paid anything extra, and then your balance of what you still owe. So you can really track your debts this way. See the debt snowball really begin to work. The next one is very similar, but this is the debt snowball tracker. So you can, again, do up to four debts and you're tracking your payments by month and then giving yourself a new balance. So hopefully as the years go on, the year goes on, you're able to mark off those smallest debts and continue to roll that money that you are paying over to the next one. The next few pages are just different trackers to help you track different accounts and different spending that you do. So this is the emergency fund spreadsheet. So this is tracking money that you're putting in your emergency fund or taking out of your emergency fund. Sometimes if we just have to write things down on a form and be accountable to ourselves or a spouse, then we're less likely to pull from a savings account unless it's an actual emergency. So tracking that can be helpful. There's just a regular savings tracker. So there's a line for you to label this savings if it's for something specific. It could be a car savings account or just something big, maybe some furniture you're saving up for. You can track that. These can be super helpful. These are spending trackers. So these can be helpful as you're planning for the next year, just to give you an idea of how much you're spending in different categories. So this is the car maintenance spending tracker. So let's say this year you only save $600 throughout the whole year, so $50 a month for car maintenance, but you end up spending $1,000 on car maintenance this year. And so when you get to the bottom of this, you realize, oh, I had to end up pulling from my emergency fund to cover the last bit of car maintenance. Next year, I need to save a little bit more in that sinking fund. So these can be really helpful in that way. So we have just a blank spending tracker, so you can kind of label this how for whatever, maybe whatever you're trying to track. We have a pet care spending tracker and a medical and dental spending tracker. The next two pages are yearly bill pay checklist. So this is just a great way to track your bills, make sure everything's getting paid each month. So there's one that gives you kind of a list that's already there. And then there's one that's blank where you can add your own list. And then the next page is a yearly spending tracker. So you can track how much you're spending in different budget categories each month and then get an annual total. So I think that this can be really helpful and kind of eye-opening for different categories that we don't think we're spending as much on or we're kind of unsure of how much we're spending each year. So like just for example, I think clothing can be a great thing to track. Maybe your child is playing in a travel league sport, so you can track how much you're spending each month and get an annual total. I think that can be really eye-opening to see how much we're spending and also another way to prepare for the next year. Okay, we are almost done. So the next page is the annual charitable donations tracker. So that donations tracker that you will have each month, you'll just take how much you spend total on that and add that into this form and then you'll get an overall total of how much you donated. So you can make sure that you are hitting your goals for donations, you can use this form as you're preparing for your taxes, all that kind of thing. 
The next two forms are the different budget planners. So this is for if you're planning a vacation, you can plan your vacation budget on this form. And then the next one is your Christmas budget planner, which it is right around the corner, you guys. I cannot believe how close it is. So you can plan different things like gifts, Christmas cards, decorations, gathering, and miscellaneous. Just make sure that you're preparing not just for gifts, but all of these other things that can come up around the Christmas holiday season as well. And the final page in your 2024 budget binder is just another blank note section. So you might want to print a handful of these and throw them in the back. So if you need places to just jot notes, do some math, whatever you need, it's there for you. Well, I hope that you guys enjoyed this walkthrough of the 2024 budget binder. If you guys have any questions, please leave them in the comments below. Don't hesitate to send me an email if you have any kind of longer questions. I will try to respond as soon as I can. The sale is going through October 27th at midnight. So if you want to grab the 2024 budget binder, the digital budget template, or any of the other budgeting bundles, make sure to grab them now. This is the best sale that they will be on for the next 10 days. And then after that, the, the rest of the sales are just not quite as high. I always see my lunch sale as the largest sale. So you'll save 30% off with the code EARLYBIRD. I hope that you guys enjoyed this and I will see you in my next video. Bye guys.